Good afternoon, residents of Everett, Washington. I would like to call to order the Everett City Council meeting of December 22nd, 2021. In accordance with the governor's Healthy Washington guidelines and to protect city employees and members of the public from transmission of COVID-19, the city council is conducting our weekly council meeting remotely. We are prepared to reopen the council chambers to public meetings when public health considerations indicate it is safe to do so. There are several ways in which you can engage with the council and participate in our meetings. To watch or participate in a remote meeting, you may watch council meetings live on Comcast Channel 21 or Frontier Channel 29. You may watch live online at www.everettwa.gov backslash city council, where you may also watch past meetings. And you may also call in to listen to the live meeting at any point by dialing 425-616-3920. Conference ID is 724-887-726 pound. You may find the public comment registration form on the City of Everett website under the City Council Department. Once you select the register here to provide comment via Zoom link, you will need to fill out the form completely if you wish to provide public comment at a future meeting. After the public comment form is submitted, you'll receive an email confirmation with the Zoom link and the phone number to the meeting. Participants must submit the form at least 30 minutes prior to the meeting. Form submitted after that time will not receive the Zoom link or number but to speak, but they may still participate the day of the council meeting by submitting comments in writing at council at everettwa.gov. For assistance, please contact the council office at 425-257-8703 or email Deb Williams at dwilliams at everettwa.gov. And please note, we do not allow comments on any kind of campaigning, whether for or against ballot measures or candidates running for office. We also do not accept comments focused on personal matters that are unrelated to city business. <clears throat> Outside of our meetings, members of the public are always welcome to contact council members or provide comments via email at council at everettwa.gov or by calling the city council office at 425-257-8703. Clerk, will you please take the roll? Mayor Franklin? Here. Council member Murphy? Can you hear me? Oh, now I can. Yes, thank you. Councilmember Roberts? Here. Councilmember Tui? Here. Councilmember Moore? Here. Councilmember Vogley? Here. Councilmember Bader? Here. And President Stonesider? Here. I'd like to call on Councilmember Roberts to read the land acknowledgement. Uh, thank you. The City Council wishes to acknowledge the original inhabitants of this place. The Stahobsha people and their successors, the Tulalip tribes, since time immemorial, they have hunted, fished, gathered on, and taken care of these lands and waters. We respect their sovereignty, their right to self-determination, and honor their sacred spiritual connection with the land and water. We will strive to be honest about our past mistakes and bring about a future that includes their people, stories, and voices to form a more just and equitable society. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Murphy, would you please lead us to the Pledge of Allegiance? Yes, thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, do I hear a motion for approval of the minutes of December 15th, 2021? Council Member Summers. No. Second. <laughs> we have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. Clerk, will you please take the roll? Council Member Murphy? Yes. Council Member Roberts? Yes. Council Member Tui? Yes. Council Member Moore? Yes. Council Member Vogley? Abstain. Council Member Bader? Yes. President Jones Cypher? Yes. Uh, we'll move on to uh, Mayor's comments. Good afternoon, Mayor Franklin. Yeah, good afternoon, Council Members. First, I would uh, ask for your 
concurrence on an appointment to our lodging tax advisory board. I'm asking uh, Brenda Stonecipher to fill position five, which was Scott Murphy's position, uh, term expiring at 12-31-2022. So I need a, a motion for Please. that. Murphy gladly moves approval. Thank you. Fogley Robert. second. We have a motion and a second. Clerk, would please take the roll? Councilmember Murphy? Yes. Councilmember Roberts? Yes. Councilmember Tui? Yes. Councilmember Moore? Yes. Councilmember Vogley? Yes. Council Member Bader? Yes. And President Stonecipher. That will abstain. All right. Um, and then next, uh, thank you. I, I'd like to uh, uh, invite our um, Everett Public Library Board of Trustee President Maureen Maley to give a brief update on our library services. Maureen is a dedicated uh, board member, volunteer, uh, resident and educator here in the city of Everett. She served on our library board for five years and uh, under her tenure, We've hired a new library director. We've opened and expanded the uh, and renovated the uh, Evergreen Branch Library. And of course, we've been providing uh, stellar library services in the middle of a global pandemic. So really appreciate her dedication, compassion, leadership, and thoughtfulness, and would like to invite her forward to uh, share about our library services. Maureen. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I'm um, here to give you a brief review of the year at the library. So 2021 was another challenging year for our community and our library and a test of our flexibility. Library staff continued to show their resiliency by adapting to new workflows while putting the safety of coworkers and the community first. I mean, it seems like forever ago, but in January and February, the library doors were closed to the public. During that time, curbside services, virtual programs, and other digital services and materials were provided. In March, the library welcomed the community back um, and the reopening of the physical spaces included the installation of new self-check machines and a self-check phone app to help provide socially distant service. In July, library services at the Evergreen branch expanded from three to five days per week. Uh, recognizing the need to access physical materials beyond open hours, a 24-7 holds locker in the Amazon style has recently been installed at the Evergreen branch. Library staff continue to provide outstanding public service while operating with a reduced budget and staffing. Roughly 33 full-time equivalent positions were approved for the 2021 budget, and throughout the year, li the library has had quite a few vacancies, most stemming from layoffs that occurred in 2020 and from promotional opportunities. The library filled nearly 25 positions this year with new hires and or promotions. So I'm gonna give you some statistics. As of December 1st, these 33 FTE employees have welcomed over 150,000 people through the doors since they reopened in March, circulated 425,000 physical and digital items, added 24,745 physical items to the library collections, answered over 18,000 reference questions, Hosted nearly 8,000 people for 260 programs, uh, people of all ages. Provided over 11,000 in-person in computer sessions and had nearly 300,000 visits to the website. So through their commitment to the Everett community, staff continue to develop and implement new initiatives with the goal of connecting community members to needed information and resources. In 2021, the library launched several new circulating items um, all for free. These included Discover Passes to the state parks, Chromebooks, Wi-Fi hotspots, Brain Fuse online tutoring and job skills assistance, Storytime kits, and Wonder Books. The library hosted a variety of programs to support lifelong learning, community engagement, curiosity, and early literacy. Over 250 people learned about Northwest mushrooms, and over 500 middle and high school students and adults joined in on conversations with stamped authors, Jason Reynolds and Ibram Kindi as part of the One um, Everett One Book celebration. Outside of the library building, several books were installed throughout the computing, com community, including one available right now at the Evergreen Arboretum. It is without a doubt that the staff support our community. 
Working with the community development team, the library added social work interns who will spend the next two years assessing needs and developing best practice for um, social work support in the library. At the end of June and with the support of city administration and CERT volunteers, staff stepped up on very short notice to open the library buildings to function as the only city sponsored cooling centers during an unprecedented heat wave. As we look forward to 2022, the library is excited to launch its first veterans book club. Starting in January, the, glue, the group led by a skilled facilitator will meet monthly to discuss works of fiction and poetry that explore themes of military service. Group members will have the opportunity to discuss their own experiences and share their personal stories in a welcoming community of veterans. The library will continue efforts to minimize the digital divide through increasing the number of loanable hotspots and Chromebooks and by launching a program to provide six months of broadband services to eligible participants' homes. Library staff will also be working with the Connect Washington Coalition to launch a digital navigator program to help um, community members gain digital skills. You will also be happy to know that after a collaborative process with our Ask Me partners, the union, the library will be expanding hours beginning February 22nd. These hours will include e additional evening and weekend hours and will bring the library to 108 to total hours of service per week up from 80. So none of this would be possible without the continued support of our community and many of the programs and services would not be possible without support from the Friends of the Everett Public Library and other generous donors. Uh, this includes Ida Mae Shack, who at her passing left an additional $200,000 to the already generous endowment she created for the library to support programs and collections. The board, of course, is also grateful to the city council for their continued support. Uh, we know times are challenging, but ever public library services are social equalizers and a critical piece of our community's social infrastructure. This infrastructure is even more important during times when our economies struggle, the digital divide is magnified, and information literacy and access to information is threatened. Over the past 21 months, the social disruptions caused by the pandemic have had devastating impacts on the availability of educational opportunities, not least because of building closures and loss of access to the services that public libraries provide. Reestablishing social infrastructures and restoring library funding is essential as we continue to navigate the pandemic and library staff have repeatedly demonstrated their nimbleness and adaptability to ever-changing circumstances. People who have access to knowledge, learning, and educational opportunities, regardless of their social standing, improve their lives and that of their community. Everett Public Libraries are inclusive, providing books and offering computers and online access to those without either, providing literacy programming for all ages and digital and physical resources, all without cost to the user. They also offer a gracious space, a space to study, read, listen, gather, or even just use the bathroom. No matter a person's financial or social standing, our libraries provide the same opportunities to all who come through the doors or access their resources online. Everett Public Library offers the child with the greatest needs the same opportunities as the child with the most privilege. New newcomers can find opportunities to develop language skills, navigate immigration processes, and fine tune job hunting skills. Teens and adults can explore online learning and technology and access programs to improve their skills in education. Small businesses and job seekers can access tools, resources, and classes to develop marketable job skills and business plans. And seniors can find help managing the ever evolving digital world and expand their knowledge through reading. Libraries continue to be a social equalizer, bringing people from a wide variety of backgrounds together to learn, experience, and connect. And City Council's continued support of the library helps our community members live their best lives by providing what they need in terms of information, technology, and entertainment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
And um, thank you so much for that update, Maureen. I, I really appreciate it. Appreciate all the leadership uh, you provided during a very challenging time in the, in our library system. But uh, you've just been a, a great leader on our of our team. So thank you. I do have a few more updates. I wanted to check to make sure there wasn't any questions from Council uh, President Stonecipher. Is there? Let's go down the roll and make sure we don't have any council questions. Starting with Council Member Murphy. No questions, but thank you very much for the update, Maureen, and certainly appreciate all your efforts and, and the efforts of the library staff over this past year. Thanks very much. Council Member Roberts. I just echo the thanks, Maureen. Thank you to you, your colleagues on the board, the library staff. I cannot think of a more challenging time uh, than, the, than what we've experienced in the last two years and the importance of the library is so huge. So thank you so, so very much. And thanks for the great report. Council Member Tui. Yes, uh, just wanna reiterate, thank you, Maureen. You did a fab fabulous job and really wanna thank all of the library staff for tremendous, tremendous work that they do. That's it. Council Member Moore. Um, Maureen, it's all been said. I think you very well deserve a raise. Um, amazing presentation and work. Thank you for your volunteer efforts. Councilmember Vogley. All of those things. And it's very, very exciting to hear that we're going to be able to have more hours open. And um, thank you, AFSME and library for coming to an agreement and working it out. And thank you for sharing all of the information that you just did. Appreciate it. Councilmember Bader. Yeah, thanks for the report, Maureen. Uh, great info. I uh, really appreciate the additional library hours. I really missed them uh, this fall on Sunday afternoon so I could leave home and not watch Seahawks games and go to the library, but uh, we'll take what we can get. So uh, grateful to have it in February. So uh, thanks very much. Thank you. And I'll just add, uh, Maureen, I, the, I was have been part of the library board uh, meetings at some points in my career and one thing that has stood out over the last couple of years is really the innovation that the um, staff has 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 had um, taking initiative to figure out ways that they can still deliver library services to our community even under the pandemic the close closures and um, reduced hours etc so i'm glad to see hours are resuming and also um, very grateful to all the work that went into um, creating some new innovative ways to help our community access uh, the materials and resources that our library holds. So thank you. Mayor Franklin. Hey, yeah, great, thank you. I, I do have a few more comments. So I'll apologize in advance to my colleagues for a little lengthier uh, mayor's comment section this council meeting, but as you all know, it's the last meeting of the year and the last meeting for four of you. And so I just wanted to well, thank, thank the whole of you. Um, this has been a, a fantastic council team to work with. Um, I really have enjoyed uh, working together with each one of you, but I wanna especially recognize uh, just a couple of you who are leaving. So first, you know, Scott Bader, you um, have been such a, I, I, I kind of always call you one of our hardest working team members. Um, you're earnest, you, you do your homework, you're compassionate, you're kind, you're, you're very thoughtful and caring about the community and you always strive to kind of get perspective from them uh, or listens to our residents before you make decisions and you know with me you're you're very respectful of our differences you, you know we don't agree on all the issues but you're always good about uh, letting me know when you don't and and you know always with kind of trying to seek understanding um I also appreciate how engaged you are on regional issues. You've served as liaison on, on, on PSRC and obviously uh, as a liaison on the health district during this entire pandemic. And then lastly, you're just uh, incredibly thoughtful and supportive of, of staff. Uh, you recognize the, the incredible public servants we have here on the city teams. And I just very much appreciate that about you is, is how supportive you are of our staff. So wanted to say thank you to council member Bader I also um, want to thank Councilmember Moore. Um, Councilmember Moore too is, has been a real champion of our staff. Uh, 
Jeff, you, you, uh, I think you truly understand and appreciate the work of public service. Uh, you, you are a public servant yourself in your day job, and um, just you're, you can always be counted on to, to, to bring that staff perspective, but you can also be counted on to bring levity. And I think we're going to very much miss that to you. Um, your, your jokes are often silly, but they, you know, the work we do is, is difficult and hard. And sometimes there's disagreements and, and you always have a fun way of lightening the mood, but you also bring that really balanced perspective to council discussions and uh, the depth of understanding that you have of public finances and the financial reality that our city faces. Um, has really been extraordinary and something that I have really leaned on and appreciated greatly. And I think that you are exceptionally uh, brave uh, when it comes to speaking about the difficult subjects, um, the finance, the situation, the structural deficit is just one of them. But you are a very brave soul and, and speaking your mind and, and you've always been a really strong voice for South Everett. Um, and clearly an invaluable connection to our school district. So I just want to thank you. Uh, Councilmember Murphy, you have uh, never been afraid to bring a contrary point of view to tough topics and, and really dive into difficult policies and, and ensure a really robust conversation. And each time you've done that, you've ensured that we as a whole are making far better decisions than we would have without you doing that. So I just wanna thank you for that. Clearly you have a, a great attention to detail on financial matters, which has served the city very well. You've also been an outstanding um, representative on our public facilities district. And I'm very pleased to be able to reappoint you to that role. But in the time on the council, you've been our representative on, uh, from the city side. Uh, you've led us on that uh, through the public facilities district through some of our most challenging times. The PFD was in a really tough position financially before you joined the board and it's now stronger uh, due to your leadership and support and i'm uh, again thrilled that you're going to continue to be serve in that role uh, as chair of our lodging tax advisory committee you've supported uh, so many wonderful organizations and events and especially during this uh, very challenging time in our city's history when those types of events have been kind of a lifeline not only for the organizations but for our community so really appreciate your leadership there. It's no surprise that we didn't agree on everything. Um, but one of the areas that you and I very much agree on is, is how we support law enforcement and our Everett Police Department. And you've always been such a strong advocate for our, our police officers and um, the work they do. And I just want to say how much I appreciate that. And I know our team here at the city really appreciates you as well. And um, Finally, um, Council Member Roberts, you know, uh, you were one of the first council members that I that I that I met before I was on the council myself. Um, I've just always appreciated your your leadership on so many so many regional issues. Um, you are incredibly engaged engaged in in your work, and you know, I don't know if the community really recognizes that. Being a council member is a part-time job. Uh, everyone has uh, work that they do outside of council. And I honestly don't know how council member Roberts has done it because it seems like he works 24 seven as a council member for this community. Uh, you've been a climate champion. You are uh, very much a regionalist. I have uh, trusted you to represent us on any number of regional boards, Puget Sound Regional Council, Puget Sound Clean Air Agency, Sound Transit, uh, Snohomish County cities, uh, I'm sure I'm missing some, uh, but you have always been a very strong voice for this community. And uh, one of the things that I really appreciate about you is how, um, how diplomatic you are. Uh, you uh, are very thoughtful in your responses and discussions. Uh, you, you recognize your role as a, as a policy leader and um, just really good at bringing a diversity of perspectives together and finding a way to find a, a, a clear direction. And so appreciate that about you. Um, you're thoughtful and generous with your time. And uh, anyway, I, I'm going to look forward to working with you and your continued role on um, 
Puget Sound Clean Air Agency, um, but I'll very much look forward to hearing your band play live music and, and seeing you out and engaged in our community in the arts and music and culture scene uh, that you've always been a, a real champion for as well. So I know uh, there's much more I'd like to say, but I'm being long winded already. So just wanted to thank the four of you for your leadership and tell each one of you how much I'm gonna miss you. So thank you. With that, no further comments tonight or today. Thank you. We will move on to council comments and liaison reports. I'm going to change the order a little bit so that some of our um, council members who aren't leaving can uh, first acknowledge those who are. Um, starting with uh, council member Tui. Yeah, thank you, council president. So uh, as the mayor just stated, we are in a unique situation today as we find ourselves uh, saying farewell to four of our uh, council members. And if you think about the cumulative years of service they have collectively, it's extremely impressive. And as the mayor brought up, each one of them has brought a level of expertise to the council and to the city that has been immensely helpful over the years. So for me, it's been a real joy getting to know each one of you and to work with you on many different projects. The one thing that really stands out to me, and it applies to each one of you, is that you all care deeply for our city. And while we don't always vote alike, it is always evident that you have listened and cared for both sides of the issues. And you understand both sides, which often makes our decision making very, very hard. But you do care for our city and we want the best, you want the best for all of our neighborhoods as well as our businesses. And I thank you for that. And I know the city thanks you for that too. But I have a feeling we will hear from you if we uh, miss something along the way, I'm sure we'll get a phone call. Hey, you might want to think about this. <laughs> uh, and I welcome that too, because you guys have such a, a breadth of knowledge. So I wish all of you uh, a very, very wonderful holiday with your families and uh, a safe 2022 and look forward to seeing you uh, next year. And I do wanna wish uh, the mayor and the rest of council members also a very happy uh, holiday with your family, as well as all the staff, city staff and uh, all of our community. We hope that 2022 is gonna be a, a ray of light uh, and give us some new hope for getting through all of this. So that's all I have, but thank you. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Vogley. Thanks. Um, I'm very happy to have been able to celebrate all of you um, a couple of evenings ago. And even then, I didn't write a speech. So <laughs> here are a few words. I actually wrote them down, though, this time. Um, I just wish to thank all of you, Council Members Roberts and Bader and Moore and Murphy, for teaching me a lot as a newbie. And uh, I wish you all well in your future endeavors. And I mean that sincerely. Um, we have learned a lot together and um, it's been pretty intense at moments and I appreciate them all. Um, I have a couple regular comments as liaison. Is this now? That's now. <laughs> Um, so be well and thank you. And um, I also went to the West Mahali Neighborhood Association meeting and I'm a week late because I missed last week, but um, we got to hear from Lila from Friends of the Library and uh, that was very cool. She joined us with information for participating in Friends of the Library and, um, and so it was really nice then today to hear from Maureen. Um, we also spoke a lot about the red light cameras and pros and cons of how those will work if they come to the city and um, also put a shout out at the meeting and right now for commissions and boards, particularly districting and transportation advisory committee. Uh, if you're listening to this amazing city council meeting, then please do your part and sign up for a commission. That's all I have. Um, 
thank you so much again, colleagues. And to all of those who do not celebrate Christmas, hats off. I also do not celebrate Christmas. Um, so be well, be safe, and enjoy the weather as much as you can. Thank you. Uh, and I will just add my um, comments. We find ourselves in very unique circumstances. Uh, I've been on the city council for many years and never before have we had turnover of four council members at any one given time. Um, and while this was uh, the result of the new districting proposal that our residents um, and voters uh, put in place and put in motion. Um, nonetheless, we are losing a great deal. We're losing 45 years of uh, experience on the city council. Um, and that is going to take a big toll out of um, the work that we do. Not that we won't overcome it. We've done so before, but it is definitely going to um, be a difficult proposition for the city to recover from this loss of all this great talent. I won't go into too many details, um, but just to say, Councilmember Murphy appreciates so much your um, partnership on a lot of the budgeting issues. I have been for many time and long points of time, the only CPA on the city council, and it's nice to have had somebody else join um, and uh, work with uh, Councilmember Moore and I as we uh, navigated through a lot of budget challenges that over the years that the city has faced and especially more recently. Um, so I appreciate that. Council Member Moore, uh, your uh, commitment to the community um, uh, and carrying the torch for your family too, in some ways, um, your understanding of the staff perspective uh, for uh, what happens when council members ask what might seem like an innocuous question um, very, very helpful. And again, your lighthearted humor and able to make, um, even at tense times, make, make light um, and help us understand that it's uh, great. You, we're facing serious consequences, but also there can be levity. Councilmember Bader, you have been um, such a hard worker on the city council. And while initially your legal mind is something that we would all rely on. Your knowledge in other areas is just amazing. Your focus on transportation as an important uh, aspect of what the city does and our transit agency in particular um, and, and sound transit and all the other ways that people try to get around our community has been uh, extremely helpful. We're going to miss you on those as the voice. Of course, you'll hopefully be still writing our transit systems and can let us know at any time if something is amiss that we need to know about. Um, so we'll appreciate hearing from you again in the future. And then Council Member Roberts, 16 years on the council is a very long time. Um, and your knowledge, even before you came to city council, uh, for having served as the planning director for the city for many, many years and, uh, and regionally as well, has really uh, provided you with a wealth of knowledge in so many different areas that have come to bear on a lot of the important work that we've done on the city council over the past 16 years. We will miss you terribly. Uh, we hope that you will continue to inform us of, again, anything that we need to know about um, and that you'll stay engaged in some of the important climate work that you uh, got initiated and was were instrumental in getting started at the city, as well as many of the regional matters. I know that you still will continue to serve on um, some regional capacity for the city on our behalf and appreciate your uh, willingness to continue to do that. So you will be missed um, on council and also uh, as, a, as a personal friend. Well, I'm gonna miss working with you. With that, we'll let these departing council members say their piece, and I'll go down the roll that way with Council Member Murphy. Oh, thank you, uh, Brenda. Uh, I'm going to be a little less formal today than I have been. <clears throat> and, and thank you, uh, Cassie and Brenda and Judy and Liz, for your really kind and generous comments. Uh, I'm glad I wrote my stuff down because I wrote it down because I, I didn't want to get 
tripped up if I got a little bit of fentanyl in there. And, uh, it's a good thing I did because I'm already getting that way. So uh, thank you again for your kind words. Uh, so as I wind up my nine years of service on the city council, as you can imagine, it is a little bit bittersweet. I have uh, thoroughly enjoyed almost every aspect of this. Uh, and But at the same time, I recognize that all good things must come to an end. And so there is just a little bit of bittersweetness here today. Uh, but I do have a few comments. And uh, first, I just wanna say it's been such an honor to serve the city of Everett as a council member. And I really wanna thank the community for trusting me with the responsibility that comes along with being a council member and, and for electing me twice to this position. Second of all, I've learned so much about our city over the years. I've just been blown away about uh, how complicated our city is. You know, with 1,200 employees and a city that is really unique for its size in the state of Washington, based on all the services that we continue to provide for our community, whether it's our very own transit system, our own library system, providing sewer and water services, including water to over half a million countywide residents, two public golf courses, over 40 city parks, and so on and so on. There's just so much more than meets the eye to running a city like uh, Everett. And I just have such a great appreciation for all that goes into running the city, much more so than I did nine years ago. And I'm really grateful for the experience that I've gained over these last nine years. Third, it's no secret that over the years, we have a city, as a city, have faced many challenges together. And during my nine years, I have seen city staff step up time and time and time again and go way above and beyond the call of duty, doing what they believe to be best for the city. And in particular, I would uh, call out Cassie and Nick Harper and Lori Cummings and Susie Haugen, who I've uh, all worked with closely over the years. But of course, that also goes for all of the city staff, all the administrative staff. And I also want to just uh, also thank the former administration who I worked with closely over the first five years of my tenure and, and uh, including Mayor Reyes and his staff. So thank you to all of you. Want to just also give a very special shout out to uh, Deb Williams, our council executive assistant. Uh, Deb, <clears throat> you have been amazing to work with all these years and your dedication and commitment to the city are second to none. And I wanna thank you for your help over the years and for always trying to make the council members be successful. That is not an easy job with all the different personalities, but you have done it with style and grace. And I really wanna thank you for your ongoing commitment, commitment to serving our city. <clears throat> uh, to my council colleagues, I am so proud of all that we've accomplished together and to have served as your colleague. While we have not always agreed on all issues, um, something else that I've learned over the last nine years is that's okay. The robust and sometimes passionate discussions we've had over the years, I believe have led to better transparency for the public and in nearly every case to a better decision in the end. Each of you have inspired me in different ways over the years, and I'm deeply grateful to you for your service. Speaking of public service, I sometimes ask myself, why is public service so important to me? Because I think there's a truth about public service, service that is often unspoken and rarely understood. And it's that the role of an elected official is about much more than balancing budgets and ensuring the delivery of essential services. I think as public services, it's as public servants, excuse me, it's important that we realize that we're helping to ensure transparency, we're setting policy, we're even helping to uphold our democracy, but it also gets all the way down to an individual level where we're trying to make someone's day just slightly better. But no matter why we each find our public service work important, we all have committed a portion of our lives to public service and that is certainly worth honoring. Yeah, I would just simply add that I'm not really going anywhere. I'll still be around and I'm always willing to help make things get better in Everett. So to Brenda, Judy and Liz, and to our four incoming council members, please, please feel free to reach out at any time, whether it's for advice 
information or to ask for assistance. If there's something to, that I can do to help, I certainly will. And, uh, you know, if we were in person, I'd probably stand up and give each and every one of you a hug right now, but that's not really possible. So a uh, virtual hug to all of you. And in closing, I'd just like to wish all my colleagues, staff, and community members a happy holiday season and best wishes for a successful and let's hope healthy 2022. Thank you. Council Member Moore. Twelve years and I still get the mute stuck. Um, Scott, that was um, very well laid out. I, I would have to say, uh, beginning with um, kind of where you ended about the community and serving the community. And it, I would always say it's been an honor and a privilege to serve the community. And as you said, Scott, that is our role. Our role is to be is to listen, it's to put aside our own agendas, it's to um, understand the issues, is to represent what's best for the city, even if it's not um, important to uh, or impactful to a certain um, demographic, I don't mean demographic, but location within our city. So public service, it begins when we are well before city council. So I would encourage our youngest citizens to get involved early, get involved in your neighborhood associations. Find ways that we couldn't to engage our communities and the cultures we have here. The Ever Public Schools is over 50% or under 50% um, Caucasian. Um, I just would ask that you engage them because we have the greatest opportunity as council members to do that. And our, uh, my heart for the city, I, I've always thought in the 12 years and, and before that the planning commission and before that the border of you, that um, it, you get much more out of it than, than what you invest. Um, we have a, a, an amazing future here in the city. I thought that in 2010 when, when I joined council and we just were on the edge of a, a riverfront and a waterfront and um, that's happening now. And it's it's been difficult to wade through those difficult times, but this city has so much potential, so much natural beauty, such an amazing group of citizens that engage in nonprofits that know each other. We're, we're not a community that is um, in silos. Um, yes, we have silos, but somehow together we are always able to um, provide for those who, who don't. And so around us, as, as, as Scott said, there's tremendous civic leaders and there's a lot of um, opportunity to engage them, I would, I would say to our newest council members. So I'm just extreme, extremely grateful. I know four years ago when I ran for the last time and I took all of my campaign signs to the transfer station, I still kind of had that wonder. I still have that one bundle of si signs up in the garage and it's still sitting there. So if anybody wants a souvenir, um, come by my house, I'm giving out free Jeff Moore signs. Um, but all in all, it is really bittersweet. I, I remember Scott, you said, I like most all of it. Tell me that you liked campaigning because that's probably the most difficult part of the job. Once you get over that hurdle, everybody, it's it's great to serve our city. You touched on staff, um, you know, uh, knowing Paul back when he was a planning commissioner, working with staff, my career in Everett, being raised here in my vocation. Um, we are blessed with just amazing staff and, and they are experts in their own way. And yet um, our role isn't to tell the experts what to do, but we, we guide the experts with our opinion and what the voices we hear out in our community. And together it just makes a, a tremendous um, civic example. I'm proud to be on the city council with the seven colleagues here, um, six plus me and the mayor. And to know that, you know, when we sit on the dais and we're on, on television, that we're, we're a form of economic development. We are representing a balanced, mature, uh, transparent um, form of government 
and um, some of the things that including um, having our committee meetings in public continues to build trust in our community and i'll look to say congratulations to um, new council member fossey ryan schwab and zarlingo and i'm confident from knowing um, m most of you that that legacy will continue um, i always say work collaborative that collaboratively there have been times when administration and council um, are somewhat opposed to each other and quite often it's unnecessary because there are common solutions um, that, that that come out of that uh, i think you also mentioned just respecting the diversity of opinion if if we had seven council members that were all alike, it would not serve the city well. And when we debate and have creative conversations, there's always a better outcome. And as I mentioned, um, so many in the community, I think each and every one of us would say, keep our cell phones. Um, if you have a thought, if we can do something, um, please reach out to us. Um, I would also have to say, Deb Williams is has been probably one of the most um, guiding individuals and consistent and um, always has a historical perspective and um, is able to uh, be a catalyst between some of those difficult discussions where maybe you walk off the dais and you're a little bit flustered with somebody else um, but also just her knowledge base she's uh, uh, she's so valuable to each of you new council members i would say lean on her as well um, I did ask if this a small private celebration, and I think I have enough votes to extend former council members speaking time to six minutes instead of three. But I was pointed out that many of you may think I talk a lot. So I can honor sticking with the three minutes, but I might call and request five at a time or two. So please consider that. Um, above all else, we need we do need to have humor. We do need to appreciate our families we do need to appreciate our community we do need to help those who are sitting right outside the city hall you know on the sidewalk and um, that's where our passion is i know each one of you are passionate in different ways it really has been also an honor and a privilege to serve with you to learn from you um, liz i learned as much from you as you learned from me so um, i just wish that opportunity to each of our new council members going forward Happy holidays to our community. Um, hug those in love and help, help hug those you love and, and help those who need to be helped. And um, that's my comments for today. Thank you. And we'll go to Council Member Bader. Sorry, there, messed up the order. Uh, so, so, and sorry about the background there. As many of you know, my, my day job is working with the uh, Archdiocese of Seattle, which is the uh, Catholic Church for Western Washington, and uh, we work next to the cathedral. So uh, that's that, that's the background noise. I'm not sure how long the bells will toll for here, but uh, uh, first of all, I want to start off by saying a special thanks to Deb Williams. Uh, you know, you've done do extraordinary work under extraordinary pressure and extraordinary challenges, and very grateful for all you uh, for all you do and for all of us, and you've done for me, and uh, just can't ever say enough. I could spend the whole time talking about you and it wouldn't be enough to thank you for all you've done. Uh, thank, thank you to my colleagues for all you've, uh, all the nice comments you just uh, said and passed on. And I'm very grateful for that and those nice comments and certainly, uh, certainly have felt them over the years as well. The genuine, uh, uh, um, collegiality that we have working together. Um, I want to say I'm grateful, uh, obviously, for the opportunity to have served on the council for the last nine years plus. Uh, most of all, I don't want to forget to thank my family, my wife, my three kids for indulging me in all the time and things that they've given up so I can serve on Everett City Council and also want to thank my parents uh, for inspiring me to, to community involvement. Um, as we all know, there have been difficult decisions uh, that we all encounter, and I know the future council will and councils before us did. Um, I've tried to be the best steward of the public trust that I've been given. Um, all of us in public life know, well, we all have ambitions and goals for what we will accomplish and the decisions we make because of the constraints of the real world, competing interests, the need to compromise. Our path often ends up being the least worst option. 
Um, but I'm not unhappy unha or sad about the decisions we make. I'm, I'm proud of those decisions where we came to because I think it was the best decision we, we could make uh, uh, based on all the constraints and challenges and resources we have. Um, you know, I really hope that we as a council have been a good example of democracy to our constituents during the, the last nine years. Obviously, we don't always agree, but, uh, but I think we showed that competing interests and competing views can come together collegially and get things done. I'm not sure if that is so apparent from DC or even Olympia at times, but I hope that Everett City Council set a good example for our constituents for that. Uh, there are times I wish that uh, the, that our residents and our constituents, the people, especially the people we hear from, could spend a week uh, doing our job because I, I think they better understand the constraints and challenges uh, that we all op operate under. Um, you know, I think we'd all learn a lot. I know I did uh, when I got on um, the council as well. Certainly Everett is a great city and getting even better, uh, but this doesn't happen without the hard work of many people. I'm grateful for the hard work of so many our Everett city workers who are extraordinary people. Every, every single one I've met, I've been awed by the work and devotion you have for the city. Um, our ever residents, those who work and run businesses here, um, amazing people. I know, and I've uh, long ago realized that the great benefit to serving on Everett City Council has been getting to know uh, so many good people that I would not have otherwise had the opportunity to get to know or get to know near as well as I as I did. So, I'm, there anything I take away from this experience will be that I think Everett has a bright future. I hope to be uh, hope to be part of that and doing doing my part, whether it's my neighborhood now or maybe a city board or commission or just being involved in the city. Um, but that future isn't a given. We've seen other cities of our size and situation stumble and struggle even more than Everett has. Avoiding their fate is what has guided my decisions, uh, as imperfect as they may be. And my apologies, especially to my colleagues or city staff for the times that I haven't been as, as kind or um, thoughtful as I should have been. Uh, um, I. Uh, I remember many of those times and, and uh, unfortunately sometimes take those away with me too, but my apologies for, for those. Um, I, I hope and pray that we're able to move forward uh, um, and avoiding the fate of some of those places, but and I think we will. And so I uh, wish the best to, uh, my, my, um, to my colleagues who are staying and to the new city council coming on board and uh, just a Christmas greeting that I hope all of us in the city can enjoy. Uh, some peace and downtime here over the next few days as uh, as we uh, get through this uh, uh, go through this time of year and uh, best to everyone. Thanks for letting me have an opportunity to say a few heartfelt words. Thank you. And last but not least, Councilmember Roberts. Well, thanks, President Stonecipher, um, and thanks all. I I have to and I have to start by thanking my wife, Mary Ann, <laughs> uh, who, who has long uh, uh, put up with my disappearing for hours on end, uh, or even when I'm home working on something, um, and uh, who actually ran the house. Uh, and I learned long ago not to get in her way, and everything would go well. And, she, and I really uh, deeply appreciate all the support that she's given me. Um, and I want to thank the mayor and my colleagues, uh, because what we're hearing is the real expression of people who love their community. So it's, a, it's kind of hard after a, a long career. But for me, it's been a 50 year career as of this year, 40 of which have been engaged with the city of Everett, 16 years on the council and 15 years plus uh, as the city's planning director. You know, I've had this amazing career, so I'm just really honored uh, to have worked with all of you. I have had a opportunity to be a part of bringing the Navy here, aerospace, 777 and 87, um, expedited permit systems, building Southwest Everett, infrastructure, and last but not least, the environment. In each of these cases, I've sometimes been in a leading role, sometimes been in a supportive role, but never alone. Uh, the teamwork that exists in this community and how we come together to do what we do uh, is uh, really remarkable. And it is the sort of thing that other communities just wish they had. I hope we recognize and value it uh, as much going forward because uh, it really is the glue that makes this place work. 
uh, we have, and I must express my deep appreciation to the incredible staff, uh, very professional people who have served this community, all of it, uh, with great dedication and love. Uh, I want to thank my council colleagues, present and past. So, you know, there's if you're here for a few years, you see changes. But what has not changed is the collegiality and civility that we bring to this work. In this day and age, that's a more valued commodity than it used to be. And I hope that what, go, what we do going forward continues to lean and draw upon collegiality and civility. We learn to disagree without being disagreeable. And that has been the hallmark of the work of this council and administration. And I can tell you that's not the case in every community around this state, but it is here. Uh, so I just hope that that continues. I know it's been something that I have valued greatly. Uh, I have to thank Deb Williams, who's been, uh, who, who is professionalism, uh, has been just huge. And she has been supportive, not only of me personally and professionally, but everyone here. And my favorite takeaway saying from Deb is presenting the council and the city in the light most favorable. And that's something that she has done just remarkably, remarkably well. So uh, thank you, Deb, for all that support, uh, all that you've given to all of us. Um, I wish the very, very best to the new council. Uh, I, like my colleagues, are certainly here to help and support you as we go forward. But I would, I, I would want to respect that you have the job to do now and the mantle is in your hands. And I'm happy to answer a phone call, but I will be very reluctant to make them because sometimes what you don't need is the advice of someone who's been there. Uh, what you, if you need that advice and help, it is yours for the asking. Every one of my colleagues who loves this community doesn't lose that love or care as they leave here today. But we would, I know speaking for myself, want to be very respectful that sometimes you don't need my advice, but if you want it, you got it. So uh, with that, thank you very much. Uh, thanks to my council colleagues and to the mayor. And I wish just the very best to this community and to the staff uh, for a very happy holiday and a, a, a very, very good 2022. Thank you. Thank you. And I will take an unusual move of calling on Deb Williams, who would like to say a few words as well. Thank you, President Stone Cipher. I just wanted to say that it has been my honor and privilege to support the council members leaving today. Your historical footprint on the city will long be remembered, and I thank you for our service to our community. You will definitely be missed, but I know your families are anxious to have you home. And thank you all for the kind words. Thank you. Thank you, Deb. Okay, that is council member comments and liaison reports. We, uh, let's see, we will move on to our regular, regular programming here. Do we have an update from administration today? Yes, council president Stonecipher, just a brief update. Um, the consent agenda includes a request for council to authorize the mayor to sign the contract with the Imagine Children's Museum, awarding $80,000 through the Everett Forward grant program. Council will recall that the city is a recipient of just over $20 million from the ARPA funds, American Rescue Plan. And through resolution, it was de the council determined that the city intends, uh, would use, uh, would allocate a million dollars initially of these funds for the Everett Forward grants, uh, which were for one-time grants to businesses and other applicants to move Everett's economy forward through the pandemic. Uh, the Everett Ford grants over 50,000 will be coming to council for approval. So this is the first one. And we thought it was important to bring this one forward with this council who uh, has been instrumental uh, as well as the mayor in moving forward to support our community with these grants. Um, mayor Franklin, under the mayor Franklin's leadership and the economic development team's hard work, 
uh, we're excited to bring this initial grant and there will be more coming uh, for a proposed $80,000 to uh, for approval for the Children's Museum. Again, that's under consent. So I wanted to just spend a moment pointing that out because I believe it's, it is significant. Uh, and second and last, uh, I won't belabor uh, the thank yous, but on behalf of the staff, I, I really um, want to thank the council, those that are leaving and those that uh, will be following in uh, January for their support and service uh, to the community and to the staff. It's been a pleasure and I know I speak for our staff as well uh, to work with this uh, leadership team to help move the city forward. So thank you very much. And that concludes my remarks. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to City Attorney Hall. Do you have anything for us today, Mr. Hall? There is no executive session today, but I do have um, an update on two pieces of the opioid litigation. And um, also uh, we have two items that were uh, discussed in executive session last week that we're hoping to get council action on today. The um, opioid litigation first. In July, I briefed you on the proposed bankruptcy plan in the Purdue Pharma bankruptcy proceedings. That plan had um, several elements, including several billion dollars in payments by the company, uh, but also four and a half billion dollars payments by the um, Sacklers in return for immunity from future lawsuits against them individually. The city's share of that would have been um, a, a tiny fraction uh, to be determined by a formula that had yet to be fully worked out at that time. Several days ago, in a 146-page decision, the bankruptcy judge uh, rejected the proposed plan on the grounds that she lacked authority in bankruptcy court to uh, grant the Sacklers individual immunity because they were not part of the bankruptcy proceedings. In other words, they hadn't declared personal bankruptcy uh, as the company had declared corporate bankruptcy. Uh, a number of parties, of course, were disappointed with that ruling. Uh, Others welcomed it because they felt the Sacklers should be um, held more accountable than they were to this settlement. Um, but uh, we're back to square one in terms of developing a, a bankruptcy plan for the company. I'll keep you posted on how that, uh, how that develops in the future. You may have also seen news articles recently about a so-called global settlement um, with Johnson & Johnson and the three largest distributors. Because the state of Washington opted out of that settlement, Everett isn't eligible to participate in that settlement. Uh, instead, the state is currently in litigation, separate litigation with Johnson & Johnson that is underway and litigation against the distributors will um, start sometime in the near, near future. And I'll keep you updated uh, as those matters proceed. The last week, we discussed in executive session two matters. The first is related to the new Puget Sound Nutrient Permit, which is a statewide wastewater permit establishing stringent new limits on nutrients, essentially the, the nitrogen load and receiving waters. Uh, upgrades uh, or new facilities that would be necessary to meet those new limits would cost um, tens of millions of dollars. We believe the permit is legally flawed and that it's not based on sound science. So we're asking the council to authorize the city to appeal the permit. Uh, we would share costs with Tacoma Public Utilities and possibly several other jurisdictions. Um, so we're asking you, council president, to call for a motion authorizing the city to move forward with that appeal. Thank you. Do I hear a motion for the city to move forward with the appeal of the permit? Councilmember Bader, so moves. Moore will second. We have a motion and a second. Let's go down the roll to see if we have any questions, starting with Council Member Murphy. Uh, no, we've uh, we've been briefed on this before and I don't have any further questions, but support the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Roberts. Um, I, I will support the motion, but I just want to be sure that we're we're taking great care not to sacrifice any of the environmental protections. I, I am familiar with these issues, uh, at least somewhat, uh, and, and I do want to make sure that uh, we are taking all appropriate steps to support and protect water quality, while at the same time trying to find a pathway 
uh, that we can follow that and also afford to follow to uh, to address that. So I just have those concerns. I, I know I've had an opportunity to express them to uh, City Attorney Hall, uh, but I will support this. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Tui. Uh, I have no questions or comments. Councilmember Moore. No questions or comments. Councilmember Vogley. No questions or comments. Councilmember Bader. No questions or comments. Thank you. And I have no questions or comments. Clerk, will you please take the roll? Councilmember Murphy. Yes. Councilmember Roberts. Yes. Councilmember Tui. Yes. Councilmember Moore. Yes. Member Vogley. Yes. Councilmember Bader. Yes. President Stonecipher. Yes. Is that all, Mr. Hall? No, one more item. Brief. <laughs> the uh, last item is a workers' compensation claim by former Everett employee Chris Galarte. Mr. Galarte suffered significant injuries from a rollover accident while driving one of our back trucks, and that's prevented him from being able to work. The proposed settlement of the claim is $300,000, which the HR director and our outside mm -hmm. counsel um, believe is a reasonable settlement. So we're asking you, Council President, to call for a motion to authorize the mayor to execute a settlement with Mr. Galarte in the amount of $300,000. Do I hear a motion to accept the settlement? Fogley moves to accept the settlement to Mr. Galarte. Bader second. We have a motion and a second. Let's go down the roll and make sure there are no questions or comments, starting with Council Member Murphy. No, we were briefed in executive session. No questions or comments. Thanks. Councilmember Roberts. Uh, no questions. Thanks. Councilmember Tui. No question. Thank you. Councilmember Moore. No questions. Councilmember Vogley. No questions. Thanks. Councilmember Bader. No questions or comments. Thanks. I have no questions or comments. Clerk, will you please take the roll? Councilmember Murphy. Yes. Councilmember Roberts. Yes. Councilmember Tui. Yes. Councilmember Moore. Yes. Councilmember Vogley? Yes. Councilmember Bader? Yes. President Stonecipher? Yes. And with a heartfelt thanks to our departing council members, uh, that is all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Uh, let's see, Deb Williams, have we received any comments from the community for public comment? Good afternoon, President Stonecipher. I have received no written comment, but I do have one individual waiting to speak. Mr. Kunzer, when I call on you, please begin by giving your name and city for the record. Please remember to limit your comments to three minutes. When you reach 30 seconds, I will ask you to begin to wrap up. Mr. Kunzer. Hello. I got transferred during Deb's address, so I don't know if I'm on the mic or not. You are. Okay, thank you, everyone. Uh, it's always a privilege to address the Everett City Council, and I want to thank, I guess this is Thanksgiving in December, so here it goes. I want to thank Mayor Cassie Franklin for, um, sadly her camera's off, so I don't know if she's hearing me, but uh, there you are. Thank you. Um, you know, for posting reminders to social media, this is the last meeting for several Everett City Council members, like Council Members Bader, Roberts, Murphy, and more. So I want to get around to thanking them for being a good example of local Republican democracy. But first, I want to thank Deb, Pipa, and the other staff who've helped enable these safe and strategic online meetings to retain local Republican democracy, that's small r, small d, um, during a pandemic. Uh, you've given me the ability to weigh in on transit issues safely. Yes, I wrote this speech listening to the outbound council members. Second, I want to thank profusely Tom Hinkson and Everett Transit for all they're doing to keep me moving while I'm in, I'm in Everett. In fact, this picture, you, this, my background was from an early December visit before Omicron got serious. Uh, it's hopefully no secret. I love Everett Transit and I'm, and I'm energized by the agency's work. Uh, you know, I also know the next one to three years are going to be incredibly historic as we hopefully get to build back better with a better transit network for Snohomish County. Uh, I'm energized and excited about that work. I think it's very historic, and I really hope the staff know how grateful I am for them. Although if their camera's off, it really does make me wonder um, if they're hearing my thanks. Um, 
you know, hopefully we can have Ever Transit live on as a division of community transit with the proper investment for the proper service. With many backroom tasks uploaded to a world class staff, so the focus is on transit. The vote for this framework is very, very much appreciated by this writer, which, and I want to make the time today to say thank you to the council members that voted unanimously on, especially those on their last day. Um, I also wanted to briefly thank the Everett Library for the access to the Everett Held Index and Microfish back in a few years back, I think it was 2019, since really helped me understand the 1991 base realignment and closure commission situation uh, around NES would be. So I really appreciate your library. It is a world-class facility. Um, Finally, I wanted to take a moment and personally thank Sound Transit Board Member Paul Roberts for his service to Everett and the region and frankly, the, the planet's climate. Um, from standing up Naval Air Station Everett to his work on the Sound Transit Board, now that's a legacy worth upholding and continuing as much as Heidi Wells or Emmett Heaps or Rachel Woods or Sabina Papa Reyes or what, what the heck, we'll throw in Karen Kitsis as well. Uh, board member Roberts, we, we're going to miss you a lot in the transit community. And I just want to thank you so much for your hard work, whether or not it was going to those board meetings and wondering if anyone from the public was watching or really caring to helping get Sound Transit free passed. You've left a beautiful legacy. And I just want to just take a moment and just salute you and say thank you for all you've done and continue to do. And I can assure you that I'll be playing my heart out for another public hero and Rick Ellen Fritz to to make sure we win a fair and equitable merger of two wonderful transit agencies, because I'm sure you agree with me, we have no planet B and we need the best public transit options possible. So thank you for all you've done and continue to do. Thank you very much for your comments. I appreciate it. President Stonecipher, that's all I have. Thank you, Deb. Uh, we'll move on to our consent agenda. Do I hear a motion for the 16 consent items on our agenda today? Council Council uh, Robert, second, uh, but I have a question. Go ahead. I just want to make sure that in this motion, we have included uh, and incorporated the reference that uh, was made regarding the, the Children's Museum. Uh, uh, so I'm, I'm assuming it is, but I just wanted to clarify that it. Yes, as I understand, that is uh, on the agenda item number 10. In. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have a motion and a second for the consent agenda. Clerk, will you please take the roll? Can I get a confirmation on the motion? Uh, I think member Bader. Yes, uh, just the consent, uh, just moving the consent agenda. Perfect. Thank you. I just want to double check it was you. Um, so, Council Member Murphy. Taking, we're voting on the consent yes. agenda. Yes. yes, did you hear me? Yes. Okay. Council member Roberts? Yes. Council member Tui? Yes. Council member Moore? Yes. Council member Vokley? Yes. Council member Bader? Yes. President Stonecipher? Yes. Uh, and at this point, I believe I'm going to read items 17 through 21 together, or am I passing this over to you, Council Member Murphy? It, completely up to you. I do have a few comments. Uh, happy to uh, read the items first, or uh, okay, or I will. I'll read the items and then we'll pass it off to you and and uh, go down the roll. Item 17, authorize the mayor to sign the memorandum of understanding with the Everett Police Officers Association for a lateral police officer hiring incentive program. Item 18 is authorize the mayor to sign the retention incentive memorandum of understanding with the Everett Police Officers Association. Item 19, authorize the mayor to sign the retention incentive memorandum of understanding with the Everett Police Management Association. Item 20, authorize the mayor to sign the retention incentive memorandum of understanding with the Everett Police AFSME employees. Item 21, authorize the mayor to approve the retention incentive to non-represented city of Everett Police employees. These are obviously a package of incentive uh, programs. And with that, we'll go down the roll and start with Council Member Murphy. 
Thank you, Council President. And just uh, for the sake of keeping everything according to rules, do we need to have a motion? I'm yep. happy to move either one or all five of these at once if, if that's appropriate. I would entertain a motion for all items 17 through 21 together so we can discuss them at the same time. Okay, Murphy moves approval of items 17 through 21. Eight or second. Okay. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Now we will start with Council Member Murphy for comments. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Appreciate this coming forward. I have uh, brought this up, I think, a couple of times over the last two months or so. Uh, I think we're all very familiar with the staffing issues that we've been facing in our Everett Police Department uh, really over a several year period, but in particular, uh, very challenging over this past year. And I believe the latest numbers, they may have changed in the last few days, but I believe we are down currently about 17 FTEs. Uh, and that does not include the eight additional FTEs that we've approved in the 2022 budget. So a lot of work to be done to get our police department fully staffed. Uh, so I've been working over the past couple months with both Chief Templeman as well as Deputy Mayor Nick Harper on these proposals and uh, very happy to see these uh, recruitment and retention proposals come forward. I'm very supportive. I know that uh, we all recognize public safety to be a very uh, strong priority for our city and uh, very supportive of the package that the staff has put together. There's been a lot of time and effort put into these. They have very good cost estimates that, uh, that have been provided in the packet. And with that, uh, I'll turn it over to Chief mm -hmm. Tomlin, who I think is going to talk in a little bit more detail about each of the proposals. Great. Uh, thank you very much, Council Member Murphy, and, and thank you uh, for your support of these initiatives and for your role as the uh, liaison to the police department under the collaborative leadership model, and certainly for your, your years of service, as well as the other council members departing. Uh, I also want to, before I jump into some of these details, I want to recognize and, and thank Mayor Franklin as well for her support of these initiatives and her recognition also of the challenges that we're facing uh, in, in the law enforcement profession in general, uh, recruiting and uh, retaining high quality, qualified, diverse police officer and police employee candidates. So thank you very much, Mayor, for your support as well. Uh, what I'd like to do right now is just quickly um, give a high level overview of these incentives. And I would like to start with the uh, experienced officer hiring incentive memorandum of understanding. As council recalls back in 2017, you did pass uh, at that time, the original, uh, what was called the lateral officer hiring incentive at that time, designed to um, uh, offer incentives to experienced police officers and provide that uh, experience instantaneously to our agency with officers that come to us with previous law enforcement experience, thus bypassing the need to attend the law enforcement academy. Um, that was extended one time during the period and now we've reached um, the end of this, this original MOU, it expires at the end of this year. And so uh, we're recommending a replacement of the, the original one that was signed back in 2017 with a few enhancements. And, and these enhancements are based off of industry standards, what we're seeing uh, with other law enforcement agencies throughout the state of Washington, as well as uh, the country, and discussions that we've had with lateral officer applicants and those who have inquired with the Everett Police Department and, and surveying them and trying to determine what um, are the most uh, attractive incentives for lateral officers looking to make a move. So uh, in overview, what we're doing here is we are suggesting and recommending an increase in the uh, in-state in lateral incentive, uh, hiring incentive sign-on bonus that was at $20,000. We're recommending to increase that from 20 to $25,000. Um, as far as out-of-state lateral officers, the, the MOU um, increases that from 15,000 to $20,000. And then the MOU also creates a new category, and this is a category of officers that we've been encountering over the last few years, and that is what's called the BLEA Certified Officer or the Basic Law Enforcement Academy Certified Officer. This is an officer that has already attended the Basic Law Enforcement Academy or an equivalent academy in another state and does not yet have two years of law enforcement experience, so does not yet qualify as a lateral police officer. 
Uh, there's great benefit in bringing these officers on as well because uh, we don't have to wait the seven months to get them into the academy. And, and so that's definitely a benefit for us. So we're uh, suggesting to add this category of a $15,000 um, incentive for signing on if you're a BLEA certified officer. And then um, we're also suggesting an additional $5,000 uh, signing bonus for lateral officers that have at least five years experience already. So this is recognition of those lateral police officers that may be coming to us from another agency that um, have more than five years experience. And, and I'll mention here that this year, we've lost about 425 years of law enforcement experience. We have lost a lot of our um, experienced officers to retirement. And so we we as in the agency and we as in the community definitely benefit from hiring officers that bring with them that those law enforcement uh, years of experience. In addition, we're at, uh, including two more incentives. And again, these are based off of uh, what we're seeing throughout the industry, as well as talking with some of our lateral applicants, uh, a preload of 80 hours of vacation and 80 hours of sick time upon hire uh, in their vacation and sick leave banks. And then offering a relocation incentive for officers that move into Snohomish County from outside of Snohomish County um, upon employment with the Everett Police Department if that move takes place within one year of, of hire. Uh, and that relocation incentive would reimburse an officer moving here up to $7,500 with proper receipts and documentation. So though that outlines the general incentives um, for the lateral incentive MOU. And then I'd just like to quickly transition then on to the um, employee retention, recognition and retention incentive. Mm -hmm. So part of our challenge has been to not only attract new qualified uh, applicants to the police department, but also to um, to maintain and keep and retain our quality applicants. You know, these are applicants and, and employees who have gone through our rigorous background process. They're employees that have a connection to the Everett community. They're employees that gain valuable experience into how we operate here at the Everett Police Department. So after we make that huge investment, um, we certainly wanna be able to recognize our appreciation for them and the work that they do and keep them here as employees because there's a huge benefit to, again, not only the agency, but the community that we serve. So we've had challenges, not only with our commissioned officers, but we have had challenges um, at times recruiting and retaining some of our non-commissioned personnel. So this incentive applies uh, to both groups, our commissioned and non-commissioned employees. And this is a recent, uh, an incentive of 2%, uh, a one-time incentive that would be paid out to employees who are still employed at the Everett Police Department as of December 1st of 2022. Um, there is some proration included for those who may hire on during the year. Um, it's 2% of their base salary, so it doesn't include overtime or any specialty unit assignment pro pay, but it's a, a base based on their base salary. Um, again, it's one time, um, and it would apply, again, not only to police officer, officers, but some of our civilian positions, such as parking enforcement, uh, records unit, as well as our property room that have all traditionally carried vacancies, and, and it becomes very difficult to uh, find a qualified applicant pool that can pass our background um, in some of those non-commissioned positions. So it's important that we recognize and, and retain those employees as well. Um, all of this would be paid for uh, using carryover funding that was already budgeted for the police department this year in 2021. Um, so no new funding would be needed. Um, we anticipate that there will actually still be money left over based on our carry forward uh, due to unfilled vacant positions that we've carried throughout this year. So with that, I think I'll stop there and uh, unless Council Member Murphy you had any other um, points you wanted me to cover on this, uh, we turn it back to you. Well, uh, thank you, Chief Templeman, and I appreciate you uh, mentioning Mayor Franklin's support. She's been very supportive of this effort all along, and I uh, appreciated you bringing that up. A couple other uh, comments I would just make is one, uh, we 
we have been fighting this issue, as I mentioned earlier, for years. And I think as I as I mentioned a couple months ago when I first brought this concept up at a council meeting, I think I talked about the fact that we needed a bold move to really set Everett apart. I think I also drew the analogy, we've all heard uh, Naval, a Naval Station Everett be referred to as the sailor's choice. And, and I think that's really true. And, and part of what we are trying to do is to get the attention of experienced officers from not only across the state, but across the region and the country really take notice of, of the city of Everett and the police department and some of the forward uh, thinking that happens here. And so it's my hope that with this bold package, we would not only uh, once and for all try to start solving this uh, staffing shortage that we've had for many years, but also uh, you know get the attention necessary to get some of these folks hired and really turn the city of Everett police department into the police officer's choice. Uh, and so I'm very supportive of this. I, I think, you know, this is a this is a great program and uh, really also glad to see the retention aspect of it because of course it, it doesn't do you any good to hire a few more officers in the front door if just as many or more are leaving out the back door. So it's, it's a comprehensive and bold package and uh, Chief, really appreciate your efforts on this. And uh, Great to know that it's funded uh, with carryover dollars from 2021. So that's really all I wanted to add. Great, thank you very much. We'll move down uh, next to council member Roberts, questions or comments. Uh, thanks, uh, just um, first to thank uh, council member Murphy and Mayor Franklin for the work on this. Um, I also just wanna point out that at the risk of really stating the obvious, the, the world of policing uh, is undergoing some of the most challenging and wrenching uh, uh, developments uh, in the history of, of it, as far as I know it. And uh, I am very supportive of these efforts and very much in part because this department has been a national leader. I just don't think the world uh, understands uh, as much as I hope and wish and, and think they, they will, that the leadership that this, this department has exhibited uh, in policing activity, whether it's de-escalation training, uh, application of uh, drugs to help people uh, responding to overdoses, uh, working with mental health crises, uh, very, I, I don't want to go on and on, but I just need to say that this department was leading in these efforts years before these these matters came to the to the uh, attention of the press and and the public. And uh, it is because of that that I I can support these measures because it brings stability, certainty, and predictability. Uh, and it helps reinforce the very positive steps that our department and uh, uh, Chief Templeman, you and, and your leadership have provided as well as the mayor. So I, I'm uh, supportive of this because I think it helps build that uh, stability that we need going forward. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Council Member um, Book Tui. Yeah, thank you. I want to thank Councilmember Murphy for working with uh, Chief and the Mayor on this. Um, I know we spoke about it early on when you were uh, really wanting to make an effort to really help with the police department budgeting. And uh, I think this is a real great solution to some of the challenges that we face. And uh, I can't agree more with Councilmember Roberts uh, words about our the leadership and thank you chief templeman for uh, how you have led our our police force um, and, and you know they're just phenomenal people and so we're i'm very supportive of this and i just want to thank all of our police officers for um, doing a, such a great job for the city of everett so anyway thank you that's all thank you and council member moore well stated colleagues um i I just wanted to expand upon one thing that Council Member Roberts mentioned, and that is uh, the challenges that our officers face this day and age. It's it's a we all know it's a different world. There, the potential lack of respect, um, the potential dangers and safety of them for them and their families. Um, it's a different profession than it was some time ago, 
and uh, placing this emphasis uh, into our our investments and what they do is something I'm certainly going to support. Later on, we're also going to honor our other uh, first responders, our firefighters as well. But at this moment, I would certainly support this recommendation. Thank you, uh, Councilmember Bogley. Okay, this is going to be tough. Um, I've written a couple of things and I am still conflicted. Um, about what I have to say. And so I apologize in advance for if it comes across disheveled. Um, Councilmember Roberts had mentioned, and I think most of you have, that um, policing is going through a change, and it certainly is. Um, when Chief Templeman mentioned 425 years of service experience as being lost, um, that brought me back to um, the original reason why we have police and you know that was to catch slaves um, because they were property not people and that is certainly not the case anymore and that's where the big change is happening and um I remember being in discussion with Chief Templeman in 2016 when I was part of ACLU People Power, and then being in discussion with Chief Templeman uh, for Deescalate Washington Initiative 940. Um, and both of those times, I am I I am. Um, really happy <laughs> that uh, he is our chief of police here in Everett. I have great, it's some word that starts with a C and I can't remember it, so maybe it will come up, but um, he has the experience and he has the leadership qualities that this city, um, yes, has been utilizing for quite some time, even before George Floyd, you know, even and so many others. And so I'm hoping that with new hires, um, that they will, yeah, this will be the policing area that they want to come to because we are a respectful, but B, we know what the, the people need and we can change with the times and with the responsibilities. Um, I know a few of our Everett law enforcement officers and I am impressed. And I've said it before, but I also know that we need to change our structure of what we find to be important for our community uh, in that we will need less police officer support if our community is more stable and putting money towards services um, that will stabilize our economy, stabilize our housing, stabilize our social. And that is, um, it's, United States wide, <laughs> you know, it's not just Everett and it's not just Washington. So, um, so with that, I really want to retain our great officers that already know what's going on. And I want to make sure that um, the new officers coming over um, know that they're getting into a great policing effort. And hopefully we won't be having them do all of the things that they didn't used to have to do, like, you know, tromp into um, camps and and try to provide services that we just don't have as a city, you know, because co-ed even, they go out, they know the names, the people out there like them, and, but then there's no hotel to go to or no shelter or no whatever and if there is then the medication isn't available or whatever or people get evicted anyways um so 
that's the conflict, you know, do we want more cops or do we want more social services? Uh, with this particular money, um, it sounds like, and I've had lengthy discussions with the budget uh, folks, with Susie and whatnot, and I understand that it's not um, creating more, um, we don't need to come up with more money to do this. So I am curious though, the question that I have is, does the lateral incentive uh, MOU need to go for the till 2023 or can it just be for one year and then um, look at it again? Well, that would ultimately, I'll just address that, I guess, from my perspective, uh, Council Member Vogley. Uh, that's certainly under the purview of the council to, to make that ultimate decision on the, the length. Obviously, it's recommended for a couple of years. Uh, the reason being for me is because with, with 17 vacant positions and, um, and still more retirements to come, I mean, we have still veteran officers that are hitting that retirement range in that window that um, having something like this in effect um, with some certainty for lateral officers from other agencies, knowing that we have it and knowing that it's in place um, does certainly help with our recruiting. It helps with the recruiting officer when they're out marketing the agency and talking with some of these lateral officers. Uh, ultimately, the best scenario, right, is we hire a lot of great police officers over the next year and this incentive works and we don't need to really use it because we've filled our vacant positions, but it's there in the event, right, that we need to, to use it to attract some of these experienced lateral officers. So I would highly recommend, you know, that I would go for even more than two years, but, uh, but at least two years. Thank you. Thank you for that. I also want to uh, restate that when this comes to an end, uh, it does need to be re-approved by council. Um, it does, it's not just ongoing. Um, so I just wanna make sure that that is correct. And- Yes, council member that is. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, and also maybe just put in that little bit, you know, to everybody listening, yeah, I'm some person that wants structural change, but I also respect and honor the folks and the staff that are working. And so just remember all of the police officers listening that that crazy council member Vogley, meh, she still cares about you too. So, uh, and know that you are real people and deserve, you know, um, respect and all of that good stuff. Uh, that's all I got for now. I'll let it go. Thank you, Thank you. Council Member, ba uh, Council Member Bader. Uh, proud and happy to support this much needed item. No other questions or comments. Thanks. Thank you. And um, I appreciate uh, all the work that has been done to bring this forward. For me, this is really just a business decision. Turnover is very expensive for any organization. Uh, and just trying to keep the levels of staffing that you have is uh, hard enough. I know that we may or may not have need for more police officers, um, but that's really not what is before us today. What's before us today is how do we keep people that we've already spent time, energy, and money on getting up to speed um, so that they can work for our police department. We are at the same time, there is an operational review that was uh, really spurred in part by the budget committee and, and council member Murphy's work uh, on this as well. And so once we have that information before us uh, in terms of a report from that operational review, we may change our um, incentive program and we may change all sorts of things and so that is uh, really for another day but today for me i'll support this because again this is in my mind just a prudent business decision we are seeing turnover and staffing shortages in all all manner of uh, labor markets right now and so i think that for us to keep ours um keep the ones we have again, after we've spent so much uh, time and energy and money getting them up to speed, it makes prudent business sense to me. Uh, with that, clerk, will you please take the roll? 
Oh, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. I've got to do this right. We are, we have to um, take these one item at a time. So we'll start with item number 17, which is uh, the uh, incentive program for the lateral police officer hiring program. Clerk, will you please take the roll on item 17? Council Member Murphy? Yes. Council Member Roberts? Yes. Council Member Tui? Yes. Council Member Moore? Yes. Council Member Vogeli? I no. Council Member Bader? Yes. President Stone Cipher? Yes, we'll now take up item 18, which is the retention program for the Everett Police Officers Association. Clerk, will you please take the roll on item 18? Council Member Murphy? Yes. Council Member Roberts? Yes. Council Member Tui? Yes. Council Member Moore? Yes. Council Member Vogeli? Yes. Council Member Bader? Yes. President Stone Cipher? Yes. Item 19 is the retention incentive program with the Everett Police Management Association. Will you please take the roll on item 19? Council Member Murphy? Yes. Council Member Roberts? Yes. Council Member Tui? Yes. Council Member Moore? Yes. Council Member Vogley? Yes. Council Member Bader? Yes. President Stone Cipher? Yes. Um, we'll take up item 20. This is the retention incentive a uh, program with the Everett Police AFSCME employees. Clerk, will you please take the roll on item 20? Council Member Murphy? Yes. Council Member Roberts? Yes. Council Member Tui? Yes. Council Member Moore? Yes. Council Member Vogley? Yes. Council Member Bader? Yes. President Stone Cipher? Yes. And finally, item 21 is the retention incentive program to non-represented city of Everett police employees. We take the roll on item 21. Council member Murphy? Yes. Council member Roberts? Yes. Council member Tui? Yes. Council member Moore? Yes. Council member Vogley? Yes. Council member Bader? Yes. President Stone Cipher? Yes. We'll now move to item 22, Council Bill 2111-61. This is the third and final reading. Adopt the proposed ordinance creating a special improvement project entitled Port of Everett Combined Sewer Main Fund 336 Program 025 and repealing ordinance number 3823-21. Do I hear a motion? Councilmember Bader, so moves. Robert, second. Motion and a second. Let's see if we have any questions, starting with Councilmember Murphy. No questions, thank you. Councilmember Roberts. No questions, thanks. Councilmember Tui. No questions. Councilmember Moore. Councilmember Moore. Sorry, it's a mute problem. Uh, we'll move on next to Councilmember Vogley. Um, no questions. I have a comment and maybe can we do a raise your hand if you have questions or comments for the next till the 31 or more. Yes, until yeah 32 to make it go. Just a suggestion. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Moore. You're back. Do you have any questions on item number 20? I do not. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Bader. No questions or comments, thanks. Thank you. Clerk, will you please take the roll? Council Member Murphy? Yes. Council Member Roberts? Yes. Council Member Tui? Yes. Council Member Moore? Yes. Council Member Vogeli? Uh, yes. Council Member Bader? Yes. Uh, President Stone Cipher? Yes. Item 23, authorize the mayor to sign interlocal agreement between City of Everett and Port of Everett relating to Norton Terminals. Do I have a motion? Robert, so moved. Murphy, second. We have a motion and a second. Does anyone have questions or comments on this item? If so, unmute yourself and let make yourself known. Hearing none, clerk, will you please take the roll? 
Council Member Murphy? Yes. Council Member Roberts? Yes. Council Member Tui? Yes. Council Member Moore? Yes, but Liz, we wanted to stretch this out as long as we could. <laughs> Council Member Vogley? Um, we're voting, yes. <laughs> Council Member Bader? Yes. President Stonecipher? Yes. Item 24, Council Bill 2111-62, third and final reading. Adopt the proposed ordinance closing a special improvement project entitled Everett Downtown Streetscape Improvements, Phase 2, Fund 303, Program 101, as established by ordinance number 3682-19. Do I hear a motion? Robert, so moves. And a second. Probably seconds. A motion and a second. Uh, does anyone have questions on item number 24? If so, unmute yourself and make yourself known. Hearing none, clerk, will you please take the roll? Council Member Murphy? Yes. Council Member Roberts? Yes. Council Member Tui? Yes. Council Member Moore? Yes. Council Member Vogley? Yes. Council Member Bader? Yes. President Stonecipher? Yes. Item 25, Council Bill 2111-63, third and final reading. Adopt the proposed ordinance closing a special improvement project entitled Rucker Water Main Replacement Project, Fund 336, Program 002, as established by ordinance number 3683-19. Do I hear a motion? Fogley moves the motion. Is there a second? Robert, second. Are there any questions on this item? If so, unmute yourself and make yourself known. Hearing none, clerk, will you please take the roll? Council Member Murphy? Yes. Council Member Roberts? Yes. Council Member Tui? Yes. Council Member Moore? Yes. Council Member Vogley? Yes. Council Member Bader? Yes. President Stonecipher? Yes. Item 26, Council Bill 2111 64, third and final reading. Adopt the proposed ordinance closing a special improvement project entitled Downtown Streetscape Phase 3, Fund 303, Program 109, as established by ordinance number 3681-19. Do I have a motion? Hopefully, so moves. Robert, second. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? If so, please unmute yourself and make yourself known. Hearing none, clerk, will you please take the roll? Council Member Murphy? Yes. Council Member Roberts? Yes. Council Member Tui? Yes. Council Member Moore? Yes. Council Member Vogley? Yes. Council Member Bader? Yes. President Stonecipher? Yes. Item 27, Council Bill 2111-65, third and final reading. Adopt the proposed ordinance closing a special improvement project entitled Citywide Streetlight LED Conversion, Fund 303, Program 108, as established by ordinance number 3461-15. Do I have a motion? Roberts moves approval. Is there a second? Vogelie seconds. Are there any questions? If so, please unmute yourself and let me know. Hearing none, clerk, will you please take the roll? Council Member Murphy? Yes. Council Member Roberts? Yes. Council Member Tui? Yes. Council Member Moore? Yes. Council Member Vogley? Yes. Council Member Bader? Yes. President Stonecipher? Yes. Item 28, Council Bill 2111 66, third and final reading. Adopt the proposed ordinance closing a special improvement project entitled Broadway 10th Street to 19th Street Intersection Safety, Fund 303, Program 104, as established by ordinance number 3595-18. Do I have a motion? Fogley moves this matter. Eight or second. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? If so, please unmute yourself and make yourself known. Hearing none, clerk, will you please take the roll? Council Member Murphy? Yes. Council Member Roberts? Yes. Council Member Tui? Yes. Council Member Moore? Yes. 
Council Member Vogley? Yes. Council Member Bader? Yes. President Stone Cipher? Yes. Item 29, Council Bill 2111 67, third and final reading. Adopt the proposed ordinance closing a special improvement project, Water Main Replacement U, Fund 336, Program 003, is established by ordinance number 3703 19. Do I have a motion? Council Member Tui moves the motion. Murphy, second. Uh, with a motion and a second. Are there any questions or comments? Unmute yourself if so. Hearing none, clerk, will you please take the roll? Council Member Murphy? Yes. Council Member Roberts? Yes. Council Member Tui? Yes. Council Member Moore? Yes. Council Member Vogley? Yes. Council Member Bader? Yes. President Stone Cipher? Yes. Item 30, Council Bill 2111 68, third and final reading. Adopt the proposed ordinance creating a special improvement project. Fleming Street Bicycle Corridor Fund 303, Program 123. Do I have a motion? Two Vogley moves. moves. A motion. Or Vogley seconds. Motion and a second. Are there any questions or comments? Since this council member Vogley, since we're creating and not closing a special improvement project, I just want to say hooray. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, clerk, will you please take the roll? Council Member Murphy? Yes. Council Member Roberts? Yes. Council Member Tui? Yes. Council Member Moore? Yes. Council Member Vogley? Yes. Council Member Bader? Yes. President Stonecipher? Yes. Item 31, Council Bill. 2111-69, third and final reading. Adopt the proposed ordinance closing a special improvement project entitled Forest Park Swim Center Capital Improvements Project, Fund 354, Program 048, is established by ordinance number 3479-16 and amended by ordinance number 3531-17. Do I hear a motion? Murphy moves approval. Thank you. The second. Two we seconds the motion. Motion and a second. Are there any questions or comments? Please unmute yourself. Hearing none, clerk, we please take the roll. Council member Murphy. Yes. <laughs> Council member Roberts. Yes. Council member Tui. Yes. Council member Moore. Yes. Council member Vogley. Yes. Council member Bader. Yes. President Stone Cipher? Yes. Item 32, Council Bill 2111 70, third and final reading. Adopt the proposed ordinance amending and closing a special improvement project entitled Forest Park Swim Center Improvements Project, Fund 354, Program 055, as established by ordinance number 3594 18. Do I hear a motion? Do we move the motion? Eight or second. Go ahead. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions or comments? Please unmute yourself. Hearing none, clerk, will you please take the roll? Council Member Murphy? Yes. Council Member Roberts? Yes. Council Member Tui? Yes. Council Member Moore? Yes. Council Member Vogley? Yes. Council Member Bader? Yes. President Stone Cipher? Yes. Item 33, authorize the mayor to sign the collective bargaining agreement between the city and the Everett Firefighters Local 46 for the year 2022. Moore moves the motion. Eight or second. We have a motion and a second. I'm going to go down the roll on this item and see if we have any questions or comments, starting with Council Member Murphy. Uh, thank you, President Stone Cipher. A couple comments. One, I have been so focused on police over this past year because of my role as liaison to the police department. But I'm, uh, I guess, really excited to support this one. This is the other part of our public safety effort in the city. And, and uh, you know, as the very last item up for uh, motion, so to speak, on my nine-year term, I'm, I'm glad to see that uh, not only our police department received support, but 
it's nice to see the fire department get uh, get their contract renewed. I think this is a fair agreement. It was hard, you know, sort of hard bargain for on both sides, but I think it's a good agreement. And uh, you know what? The police, the police and the fire are representing the best of Everett and our public safety. So just really want to shout out to the fire department as well and happy to support this. Thank you, Councilmember Roberts. Uh, thank you. I just want to express appreciation for all involved in the negotiation of these agreements. They are tough and there are lots of complexities to these issues. And so I just want to express my appreciation in that. And that's all I have. Thank you, uh, Councilmember Tui. Yeah, I don't have much else to add. Otherwise, I am very happy to support this and to support our firefighters who do an uh, amazing job and it's been really a challenging time for them and uh, just hope 2022 gets a little bit better for all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Moore. Yeah, just to continue the reference made earlier, um, I'm proud of all of our first responders. Um, so many of them we know personally and so many of them we just see them in the line of duty and they're always professional and they're always there for our citizens. So um, it's with you know, uh, happiness that I support the, this also in terms of um, respecting our firefighters and thanking them for what they do. Thank you, Councilmember Vogley. IAFF46, keep up the good work. And Candy and all the other people at the city, keep up the good work. Um, contracts take some negotiating and you've done it. So kudos to all involved and thanks for getting it done. Thank you. And council member Bader. Say ditto to all the comments made before and that is it, thank you. Thank you. And I'll just add my appreciation to administration. I think it was a real uh, wise move to pursue a one-year agreement at this time of um, high inflation and uncertainty about what the financial future looks like. Uh, bravo for getting a good one-year agreement and uh, giving us some time just to kind of figure out what the future holds for us. And so we come now to, oh, we got to take the roll. Clerk, will you please take the roll? <laughs> Councilmember Murphy? Yes. Councilmember Roberts? Yes. Councilmember Tui? Yes. Councilmember Moore? Yes. Councilmember Vogley? Yes. Councilmember Bader? Yes, and quickly, uh, Council President Stonecipher, thanks for uh, being such a great Council President this past year, since I won't be here to say thank you uh, at the next meeting. Thank you. And President Stonecipher. Yes. Uh, so that brings us to the end of our agenda for this meeting and the last uh, agenda for this year. Um, wishing all of our residents and citizens a happy new year. Let's hope that 2022 brings us um, a more healthy uh, environment in terms of COVID and lots of prosperity for everyone in our community. As noted at the start of the meeting and provided on the screen, you may contact M. Williams in the council office for instructions on watching, listening, or participating in our weekly meeting. She can be reached by phone at 425-257-8703 or by email at dwilliams at everettwa.gov. Um, to our departing council members, there is a token of appreciation for you waiting for you at the council office. If you are not going to be back into the office before the uh, end of the year, please let Deb Williams know and she'll make arrangements to have that delivered to you. And with no further business and no executive session, we are adjourned. Bye.